Thanks, Aaron. Appreciate it. Appreciate yeah. everyone. We're having fun tonight. Y'all still having fun out there? Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. You know what? I need some laughter in my soul, and we got just the man to do it for you tonight. The Sheevsky, the one and only. Y'all, please make some noise for Tom. Fold it in half, Sheev. Wow. Good time. Hey, man. This place is fucking awesome. Yeah, all right. By the way, <laughs> this is an amazing place. Thanks for having us out. Yeah. This is cool as hell. Yeah. This is super cool. Yeah, we were in uh, D.C., as we've mentioned. And uh, have you guys ever... Uh, Wait, Tom. Yeah? Dark now. Oh, good. Thanks. 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 <laughs> I immediately forget about it. Yeah. Uh, have you guys ever been to, have you guys ever bought pot in uh, D.C.? Uh, you ever bought weed in D.C.? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's an unusual uh, process for it. We didn't know how to get any pot when we got there. We didn't have any connections and, uh, so Caleb asked the bartender closest to us, the first bartender he saw, <laughs> and uh, and he that person directed us toward uh, Mr. Weedy's T-shirt shop. <laughs> All right, which doesn't turn out to be a shop, but rather a section within a hydroponic supply store. <laughs> nice. So you go in and. Uh, uh, they have T-shirts, Mr. Weedy T-shirts for forty-two dollars, right? And uh, and if you get one, then as an afterthought, they go, oh 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 yes, and uh, and they say thanks. Uh, we'll give you this, this little thank you gift uh, for buying the forty-two dollars shirt, which is about approximately thirty-four dollars worth of pot, right? <laughs> 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 and, and your $8 t-shirt. So uh, that's how you buy weed in D.C. You have to buy shirts. You get a shirt every time you buy weed. And if when the, you know, uh, wintertime comes or anything, if there's uh, any homeless people without fucking Mr. Weedy shirts, like there, we, should, we have enough drug shirts in D.C. To, uh, to clothe everyone. Every shirts for everyone would be my mayoral uh, uh, campaign, and uh, yeah, uh -huh. unless you want, you know. But if you want like a like a dime, like a dime bag or something, you have to buy like a fifteen dollar pair of like ankle socks. You know what I'm saying? Like they scale it down. I don't know. <laughs> I just think it would be like you know, if you were like, oh fuck, I can't, uh, you know, can't pay rent. Ain't got that rent. 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 that rent. rent and the landlord's when you get out man you're packing up all your stuff and you're like god damn my boyfriend has a lot of mr weedy shirts that motherfucker god damn it there's 90 these are all new you got these this week fucker you buy an ankle sock now and then jesus chill out man <laughs> yeah if you look at it, DC is interesting. If you look at the map, you know, the way they, they designed it. And uh, so everyone's always telling you about the sacred geometry. And, uh, <laughs> right? But I went to uh, public school in Georgia, you know, and so it's like, I just need to focus on regular geometry. You know, like, <laughs> I'm not getting ahead of myself. Like, <laughs> algebra 2 seemed like God. You know, I don't know. I just, the unknowable, it's unfathomable. There's no beginning and no end. <laughs> like, no, that's not how algebra works, but uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you won't teach me, so I don't know what I know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, man. You guys are, this is a good gig. This qualifies as a good gig. Yeah. yeah. And a good audience. Yeah. Good gig and a good audience. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Aaron, where's Aaron Price? Oh, hey, baby. <laughs> hey, this, hey, give it for Aaron Price, y'all. Yeah. This guy knows about good gigs and good, uh, hey, man, what's the worst gig you ever did, Aaron? 
I played in the White House one time. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Bush. <laughs> oh, for the bushes. Oh, oh man. Don't tell fucking Kevin Evans or he'll scream in your face and bite your <laughs> neck to death. No, that's Justin Evans. Justin Evans. Fuck, <laughs> you guys are brothers. You looked exactly alike and it fucks me up every time. <laughs> <laughs> Every single time. <laughs> you ever done like it for the crowd of one? Yeah, yeah man. <laughs> <laughs> Tough gigs, man. Tough audiences. Sometimes you got a bad gig though and a good audience. Sometimes you have a good gig and a bad audience. <laughs> or an act of God. Or an act of God. Yeah, like hey, like the Titanic. That seemed like that was to start off as a good gig, right? Probably a bad audience. I would bet they were a bad audience in the beginning of that trip, you know? But then when it turned into a very bad gig, when the ship's sinking, and then the Titanic Orchestra played the entire way down, they killed it, man! And people stayed and they loved it! And they said, Nearer my God to thee! They also said, Free Bird of the Day, Nearer my God to thee, man! Nearer my God to thee! <laughs> Holding up oil lan lanterns. <laughs> Nearer my God to thee! <laughs> they played the whole way down. Titan, or, Titan that's, a, that's a good audience, too. They stayed right, they stuck around, man. There were no other options, man. The casino was closed down. The, uh, yeah, the line, you know. They're still playing slots in that They're still, yeah. They're, right. The, uh, the, and the, the, there were three cellists in the Titanic Orchestra. There were three cellists. Don't you think if you were, like, the third chair cellist, you'd be like, mm, I don't know. I don't know, guys. You might have to go fuck yourselves on this one. Um, my instrument is basically a tiny boat. So... <laughs> I'm gonna hop in and paddle away with a frozen baby or something. Yeah, but they play. Like, what are you gonna do? Like, stick around? Maybe I'll move up to second tier screamer. You know, like, you know, like the dream is over, man. Get in a fucking life raft. <laughs> it's over. We played that whole way down too, man. That's why that's why they're famous. We know about that because the survivors, presumably in the distance, they're like he's playing near my God to thee. Wow, it's beautiful as hell. Die, man. God, we have a lot of room on this raft. I guess. Uh, well, we might not have heard that performance. They might not have played if we'd saved the band. We wouldn't have gotten that out of them, you know. Is it, it's about the art. Sometimes you got to make other people suffer for the art, you know? <laughs> Even the artists. You, sometimes you have to make the artists suffer for their art. <laughs> I don't think so. If they're not suffering enough, you need to do that too. <laughs> Very professional band. I'm not that professional. Like, if this motherfucking place catches on fire, I'm not sticking around to finish my set. You know what I'm saying? I am not the Titanic Orchestra. I will be... The first one running away from the mountain lion or whatever, <laughs> swinging elbows. And go fucking, I don't give a shit. I'm out of here, man. I'm not sticking around to that shit. Look at how, uh, how famous the Titanic Orchestra is for doing that. I don't care. That's what I know about them. And they played the whole way down. And it took a while for that ship to sink, too. And that's also why we don't know that much about the Hindenburg Trio. It was a little avant-garde jazz outfit. Uh, they played the whole way down too, but the Hindenburg hit the ground in like eight seconds. So, you know, no one even really knew they were playing. They only had time to hit about two discordant notes. But that band was on fire that night, guys. Fire! Literally. Fire! Fire! Man, tough gigs. Hey, being in, in the old Shenandoah Valley, uh, what, were, what were the big, what, what were they called? What were the big battles here? Civil War. The, Bell Grove. Nell Grove. Bell, Bell Grove. Grove. Sorry, I was educated in Georgia. <laughs> Fisher's Hill. How many people died at Fisher's Hill? A couple thousand wasn't shit in the Civil War, man. Get your couple thousand out of here. I thought like 30,000 a day were dying in the Shenandoah Valley, man. Get y'all shit out of here, man. I'm just kidding. You did what's that? A population of 400. 
Four hundred? And a thousand died. Do a thousand math. is a lot out of four hundred, man. That, <laughs> that is a loss. That's tough for a community to absorb. A community of four hundred to absorb a loss of one thousand is catastrophic. Catastrophic. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Civil War is some crazy shit, man. But I got to think, like, how hard was it to find stage time during the Civil War? You know, like, someone booked the snare drummer at, like, Gettysburg. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's a weird gig, too. If you're like, hey, we're going into a certain death tomorrow, would you like a weapon or some stage time? You know, like, hmm, I always say yes, I always say yes. I'll take the stage time. All right, do you know the, um... Hymn of the Limbless Conscript? Like, yeah, 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 I think I know that one. Um, do you know the um, Chaotic Scramble Through the Woods medley? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that just whatever I play while we're chaotically scrambling through the woods? Yeah, 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 totally. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Do you care when you start playing uh, if the, uh, the horn player gets murdered? Do you mind playing solo for another 30 seconds till you get shot dead? Is that cool? Yeah, 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 totally, man. Thanks for the gig. Do <laughs> I get food? We'll, we'll pay you in uh, pizza afterwards. You get whatever pizza. If there's pizza left over. Uh, and one beer before the show. One beer before the show. <laughs> and no one on the guest list. <laughs> oh, man. Tough gig. Fucking tough gig, man. I think it would be creepy to be like in the Civil War, you're like a soldier, and your snare drummer is like rehearsing like the night before the big battle, you know, they're like, they're kind of like off in the distance outside of camp, like, like, ooh, ooh, like he's playing that slow, creepy one. <laughs> big gig tomorrow, shit. <laughs> Fuck, man. That's no good. Another hard gig, uh, Flag Bearer. That's a bad gig in the Civil War. Flag Bearer is the first person you shoot dead in the morning. Uh, when you're having your coffee and getting your guns lined up, you know, you just shoot the fucking asshole with the enemy flag uh, first, and then you hit the horn player, then you work on down the snare drummer, and then by that time you're warmed up and ready for a proper battle. Uh, and so the thing of Civil War was if your flag went down, uh, you had to prove how much of a redneck you were by running over and picking it up and waving it around like an asshole until you got shot dead. And then it would hit the ground, and then someone else would run over and wave it around. Not my flag, because you get shot dead and over and over. There's nothing heroic about that. Heroism is when you see your flag go down, and you stop other people from running toward it. You run over toward it, you grab the flag, and you throw it like a fucking javelin as far as you can. You say, guys, stay away from the flag. They're shooting the flag. Stay away. It's far away from the flag, and we should actually be in enemy uniforms and sneak the fuck out of here, frankly. All right, that's... The worst part about being the flag bearer is that the last thing that you would hear when you were shot dead was the sound of the enemy snare drummer doing a rim shot. <laughs> it gives me so much joy. Oh, my God. Uh, man, we went to the uh, Ford's Theater. We went and saw Ford's Theater in D.C. Uh, old John Wilkes Booth. That guy was a major dickhead. All right, I'm just gonna say it. Well, it's uh, I, I, uh, he. You know, nothing. He was. He was a stage hog, man. <laughs> You're not in the play tonight, John Wilkes. Get off fucking stage. It's not all about you. Big old fucking stage hog is jumping down there and speaking Latin. Like, come on, man. There's nowhere in the play making shit up. That was the last time improv was really popular in the South. Uh -huh. oh, oh. <laughs> John Wilkes Booth, man, he was the most. Fa he was a very famous actor. His older brother Edwin was the most famous actor of the 19th century, which that tells you something also about the fleeting nature of fame. <laughs> because who the fuck has ever heard of Edwin Booth, right? No one. Fucking nobody. But he was the most famous actor of the 19th century. Before TV, right? TV, yeah, yeah. Yep. And yeah, pre, yeah, right? You had to get out there and fucking be seen in person to get famous in that motherfucking time, man. Edwin Booth. And he, so, and then his little brother, John Wilkes, of course, 
rolls over to Ford's Theater and, and does the thing that you know. And uh, and then Big Brother Edwin, who was like the you know the Brad Pitt of his day, he had to take a little five year break. <laughs> like no more acting for Edwin. And he had to like take some time off and like grow a mustache and shit, you know, like and then reemerge. And he became he continued becoming the most famous actor of the 19th century, which, as we've discussed, doesn't mean jack shit. Uh, but. You know, take a little five-year break. Sometimes you, something so bad happens, you gotta just step away for a little while, you know. And, uh, like, if your little brother doesn't know how to properly behave at the theater, then you can't, you can't hang out around there. It'd be like if, uh, it'd be like if uh, 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 does Alec Baldwin have any siblings? If, like, if Alec Baldwin's little sister fucking killed Donald Trump, Alec Baldwin, you know, like, you, you can't go do the impression next week. You know what I'm saying? You kind of... I'm gonna take a little breather. I'm gonna grow a mustache or something. I'm gonna grow a little mustache. Man. Oh man, we went. Hey, did you come in the river today, uh, Justin? <laughs> I kept my eye on you. I didn't see you coming in it. I was really wanting Kevin today. <laughs> Kevin? Did Kevin? Did someone? Did Kevin come in that? Did anyone come in the river? I come everywhere. <laughs> did you come everywhere? Seriously? Like I'm coming right now. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta come in a body of water. Uh, sex, uh, sex underwater is like pretty much the driest sex there is. Have you guys noticed that? That's yeah. yeah. You're blowing my mind, water. <laughs> blowing my mind. That's like the dark, dirty secret of the water industry. No one's talking about that. Man. They should have signs up around large bodies of water that's like, do you want to have sex? Then get out! It's horrible! <laughs> you want to feel every... <laughs> feel every fold, nook, ridge, and cranny? No? Then get out! It's going to be real dry. It's going to be super dry. I think sex underwater is like sex on LSD. You know, sex on LSD is like a good idea when you're dropping a tab, and then like later on it seems like a bad idea when it's like two cold dead fish bodies slapping together. You know, and you're like, oh okay, your pores are expanding and contracting. You're like, oh my god, all right, I am inside of her body. What the fuck? I am inside of her body. Wow, this seems intimate. Ah, yeah, is my penis grafted onto her? Uh, to try. Uh, nope, still touch my body. Yeah, the story has a happy ending. All right. Oh, walk away with our genital. Better good. All right. Uh, I'm gonna have a closing thought on. Um, hmm. You guys ever um, in this age of cell phones, in this age of genitalia? Um, <laughs> Do you guys ever use your cell phone and you're trying to take a picture of that uh, you know, sexual genitalia? And, um, and then in your viewfinder, you notice all the clutter in the background of your room and you have to put your phone down and go clean your room for 20 minutes. Da, 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 da. And stage it. No. Just, just, do you guys ever use your smartphone and you're trying to take a picture of genitalia? But, and you're like, uh, and then you hit the viewfinder button to selfie mode and you're like, ah, who's that sweaty weirdo? You know? <laughs> oh, yeah, it's just me. It's just me. <laughs> All right, very good, guys. Hey, my name is Tom Sheev, guys. Thank you. Tom Sheev, everybody. Tom Sheev. Oh, God. Thank you, Tom. The Sheevsky. The Sheevsky. Fold it, feed it, finish, y'all. That's how you do it, right there. <laughs>